You might be looking to start a YouTube channel, might be brand new to video, you have no idea what to do, no idea how to film videos like this, shooting yourself. So this video is gonna be a quick start guide, a checklist of things that you should be doing when you're filming videos like this, and the things to uh, avoid as well. So we're gonna be going over framing, ISO, shutter speed, white balance, audio, and I think that's it. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing that people see when they click on your video, when they load up your video, is the framing. This, what you're seeing right now, is the framing. Framing is what you see in your shot. It's huge, it's the first thing that people see. The rule of thirds, if you don't know what that is, is a great way to start learning about good framing. Without getting into it too deep, the frame is split into thirds. Third here, third here, and third here. You can also go third here, third here, and third here are similar as well. So, for example, you could use this shot like here if you wanted to, if you really had to. If you had something going on over here, you could do it. Same as if you wanted to use on this side, and you had something going on over here, you could use that too. But if your framing looks like this, it doesn't look very good. Same as if you're looking at a shot like this, it just doesn't look that good. For the most part, you're gonna be filming yourself like this. This is the best setup. This is the angle that looks best. Spend a little bit of time on the framing on your shot, and your videos will look a lot better. White balance. For the most part, most of the time, you're gonna want shots to look like daylight. Right now, this kind of looks like daylight. When you're using auto white balance, it will normally do a pretty good job at determining what your scene should look like. And for the most part, you'll be happy with it. But sunlight, little lights in the room, can sometimes change your white balance. So it starts to go like this, or it changes to something else like this. You could be in the middle of filming and your shot changes, and now you can't use that shot at all. So it's important to make sure that you set your white balance correctly to something you want to use. Daylight is 5600 Kelvin. That's a really common one that's used. This is 5600. Of course you can go cold if you wanted to and go like Game of Thrones cold. Winter is coming. I'm pretty sure winter's here. So make sure you just set your white balance and you leave it on that. Shutter speed. So sometimes if you don't have a lot of artificial light or natural light, you might be tempted to drop your shutter speed down to get you that extra light you need. Don't because it'll start to look like this. And this does not look good. There's a rule called the 180 degree shutter rule, which in short, the too long didn't read, if you will, is that your shutter speed should be double your frame rate. So for example, for the most part, you're gonna be shooting videos like this at 24 frames a second, 23.98, if you wanna be specific. So if you double 24 frames a second, that's 48. The closest shutter speed you can get to that is 1 50th of a second. So right now I'm shooting at 1 50th of a second. A little bit earlier on when I was all jittery, that was at 1 1 20th of a second. So you can see the difference there between shooting that and this now. Similarly, if you want to shoot slow motion, let's say 60 frames a second, your shutter speed would be 1 1 20th of a second. If you have 120 frames a second in your camera, then you'd be shooting at 1 2 40th of a second. For example, it's actually not even slow motion. I just slowed myself down just as an example but those are your slow motion settings for shutter speed. Make sure your mic is turned on. I've done videos before where it wasn't turned on. Make sure your mic is pointed in the correct direction. I've done videos before where the mic is pointed over here as I needed the space and because it's over here, it sounds terrible. So make sure your mic is pointed in the right direction. If you're using a shotgun mic, one like this, this cheap tax star one, make sure it's pointed not at your mouth, but at your chest. If you have it pointed at your mouth, you're gonna pick up sounds between your words, the end of your words and weird sounds that your mouth picks up. You're gonna get all that stuff and no one wants to hear that. Also, make sure your mic levels are set correctly. Record something first and then play it back. Otherwise, it's gonna be too loud and your mic levels are gonna be blown out and that audio is just completely unusable and you gotta reshoot the entire video. So yeah, make sure you set your mic levels correctly. Aperture, I get it, you want bokeh, so do I. But with a tiny depth of field, you're really only focusing on a tiny portion of it. So my nose might be in focus, my ear might be in focus and everything else is gonna be out of focus. If you're filming on a little monitor, it might look like it's in focus, but then when you get back into post, it's not in focus and that means you gotta do the whole thing again. So avoid really, really low apertures. If your lens has an f1.4, great, don't need to use it. I go between f2.8 and f4, that seems to be the sweet spot for me for filming these kinds of videos. You get enough in focus that means my big nose isn't just in focus. Also, you may have something in front of the lens which kind of takes the focus away and then your whole video is out of focus. So like my hand here is in focus and I could actually have my hand here, but I'm not really in focus because the depth of field is so shallow. Also, if you move your hands around a lot or you 
have something in the frame. It might pick up that and looks nice if you're showing things, but now the background is just non-existent. So shallow depth of field is great for some things, but not really for these kinds of videos. This is at 1.4 in case you were wondering. Use an aperture that looks good, gives you a little bit of a shallow depth of field, blurs out that background, but isn't so narrow that two millimeters is in focus and nothing else. Also, if you're using manual focus and you don't have a flip screen and you can't see yourself, you don't have a monitor, make sure you're in focus. Not like this. My recommendation, use autofocus because it's actually pretty accurate. When you're moving around, it'll pick you up, it'll track you and it'll stay locked on. So just use autofocus, unless you have a manual focus camera or a lens, in which case, just make sure you focus in advance. ISO. So again, if you don't have a lot of light, sometimes you'll be tempted to really, really crank your ISO. And that's fine. I do that all the time myself. So know your camera's limit. With the a7 III, I can comfortably get sometimes up to 10,000 ISO. But if I really push that, it starts to look like this, which is 80,000 ISO. And it looks like a big grainy mess, shot with a potato, 640 by 480 resolution, and looks awful. So make sure you know your ISO limit. Decide in advance if you want to shoot at 1080p or 4K. I shoot most of my videos in 4K, I just like the quality. There are benefits to 4K as well. With 4K, you can crop in after the fact. So, if for some reason I was using this, and I have all this negative dead space here, I could crop in, and now this almost looks kind of usable, if it was brighter. So there are benefits to shooting in 4K. There are obviously negatives to shooting in 4K as well. The biggest one being it takes up a lot of space. It's a lot harder to edit on your processor, on your computer. And uh, sometimes your camera overheats. Not on the a7 III though, thankfully. So there you go. That is a checklist of things that you should be doing and things to avoid when it comes to filming a video like this. Hopefully that helped you if you're new to video. If not, and you knew everything already, then appreciate you watching right through to the end. If you want to get more stuff like this, then little sub button down below, you know what to do. I don't have to bore you with all those demands, which is basically what they are at the end of every video. Subscribe, like, otherwise, I don't know. All right, I'll see you guys later. See ya. A big thing as well, remember to press record. There's so many times that I don't really know if I'm recording. I get up to check and make sure the camera's recording. And that is a negative of the a7 III but make sure you press record. Imagine if you shot a whole video, the whole thing, and it took you ages and you realized you didn't press record. That can be really frustrating. So make sure you press record.